you have spoken Desires you have placed in me Faithfully you will complete Playing by your promises Words you have spoken Desires you have placed in me Faithfully you will complete From the mountain to the valley From the desert to the raging sea In the silence on the city streets your presence always covers me Hope you will lead the way Peace, you will be my strength To sing in the midst of stones Believe in your goodness, Lord From the mountain to the valley From the desert to the raging sea In the silence of the city streets Oh, your presence always covers me From the mountain to the valley From the desert to the raging sea Silence on the city streets Oh, your presence always covers me You take me in and lead me out You take me in and lead me out You take me in and lead me out You take me in and leave me out You take me in, you leave me out You take me in, you leave me out Such a journey walking with you now steps to take I don't know what moves to make this one thing I'm gonna escape your love when I don't have words to say and I can't seem to find my way this one Thing I can't escape your love, and I don't know what steps to take, and I don't know what moves to make. This one thing I can't escape your love. I don't know
seem to find my way This one thing I can't escape Your love Your love Your love Your love From the mountain to the valley From the desert to the raging sea In the silence On the city streets Your presence always covers me From the mountain To the valley From the desert To the raging sea In the silence City streets, your presence always covers me. Oh, 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 your presence always covers me. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be in this reckoning I know I will never be alone There was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the sea and Should I ever need a mind Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire There's another in the fire All my dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore 
should I fall in the space between what remains of me in this reckoning? In the way I won't bow to the things of this world, cause I know, I know I will never be.
that's where you meet Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know this way I can see the light In the darkness As the darkness bows to him I can hear the roar In the heavens As the space between was thin I can feel the ground Shake beneath us As the prison Walls cave in, nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us, and I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to him. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between was thin. stands between us nothing stands between us there'll be another in the fire standing next to me there'll be another in the waters holding back the seas or should I ever need reminding of how good you The joy come every battle Cause I know it's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know it's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know it's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count some joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be Count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be
us how to love Teach us how to love Cause you're coming back for a bride Without spot Through all my failure, hold me out the 
the other side For who could dare ascend that mountain A valid hill called Calvary But for the one I call good shepherd And like a lamb was slain to me you on the mountain how I praise you in the mountains in my way you're the sun where my feet are how I praise you in the valleys all the same no less God within the shadow no less faithful when the night leads me astray you're the heaven where my
sings through the shadows my song of a sin wherever I Welcome to Communion. I've, um, I just want to share from Colossians 3.3. 3. Um, it says, For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. And th- this scripture resonates so often with me at Communion. Um, so many times th- th- God has reminded me of this scripture and... Um, it's paramount in my in my heart and mind and and the reality of the declaration of this is so powerful and it's often at communion that he reminds me of it. We are hidden Christ. You know, it probably means different things for many of us, but I like to take it I think of it literally that the enemy can't see me because I'm hidden in him. If I'm in him, you know, and Stephen talks about my being in the garden and it is where, you know, I, I work out a, a lot of stuff and I do feel I do feel and become very close to God work, working in what he's created, you know, and given us. And this becomes reality for me. And regularly in communion when we share it together as a body, when we're in the house all together and we share communion, um, we, we have a soft bread. We use an unleavened bread for communion, as you all know, and it can bend, you know. Uh, and often when I take communion, I unfold my children. I fold it and I unfold my children. I unfold my mother and my brothers and my family in him and I unfold him in his body. And I appropriate that promise from Colossians 3.3 3, that they are hidden in Christ. There's a condition in there, isn't there? If we are in him, we're hidden in him. So I ask him to make that reality for those I love who don't know him, to hide them and reveal himself to them in his body, to, to hide them in his body, to hide them in him. And um, so usually my communion is about 
my family and and folding them and hiding them in 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 his body so, and I encourage you to in as you take communion as we take communion together as we take the bread what if you've got and if you've got the crispy bread then just uh you know I, I break it up for each one of those that I'm I'm remembering them but you know I encourage you to enfold your family to enfold yourself to enfold all the all the challenges that you're grappling with right now and we're facing a few more than usual and maybe and maybe we're facing a lot more on our own than we usually do too you know and scripture also tells us that our walk is our walk our salvation is our salvation we work this out alone we don't work it we can't we we encourage one another corporately but we all work out and walk out our own salvation don't we we do this so you know we need this to work to work out our salvation so you know i encourage you to take hold of that promise that that as we as we fold ourselves as we hide ourselves in him that we are invisible to the enemy so let's share the bread together You know, and, and as we take our juice, our wine, that that we take this and we do as Jesus encouraged us to do, to remember him, to remember his blood, to remember what he imparted to us through the atomic power of his blood, by and through and with his Holy Spirit, a life force that can be defeated by no one, can't be defeated by any power, by any darkness, by any sickness, by our mistakes, by our sin, cannot be defeated, but brings power and binds us to him. So let us share and drink together and remember him and remember his love for us. Amen. God bless you all. Souls against the people of God continues. And um, it has surprised me how meekly the church has acquiesced and has been prepared to go with a total lockdown situation. Um, I don't want to um, debate the the politics of it all except to say 
that the church is the hope of the world. The church of Jesus Christ is the hope of the world. As we sit here, I'm reminded of the Bible that some may trust in horses and some may trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of our God. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, uh, verses 9 to 12. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person fails, then the other can reach out and help. But someone who fails alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close to one another can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? Often when we get um, in trouble and this sort of virus, this trouble like no one here has seen before. But even though there can be a world uh, of hurt and pain out there, until it begins to touch us personally, we can be separated from it. So we can see that, you know, um, the fact that we may never go go to the beach or haven't been to the beach for years, the fact that the beach is closed might drive us to go. I am so full of faith for what's about to come in the world. God's going to do his stuff. He's doing his stuff now during the time of this closure, uh, Tanya has been doing a lot of gardening. She's been transforming our garden by a lot of hard work. Uh, and uh, when she works in the garden, she works and prays and works and prays and works and prays. And when she comes inside after doing that for a day, you can see that she's been with God. And so we're very thankful to God that we've got a garden. And we, we pray that you're finding a place where you contact God. We are blessed that we live in an old convent and in that old convent is a chapel where the nuns met daily for worship for years and years and years. We're not quite sure, but more than 20 years anyway. And can I tell you that um, uh, I pray in there every day. Uh, it's not like I go in there and, and pray and that's the only thing I do. I'll, I'll watch the news and do other things, but I pray in there every day. It's a place where, where prayer has happened and you pray. It's like a thin place, a place where you can easily connect with God. In Luke chapter 7 it says, When Jesus had finished saying all these things to the people, he returned to Capernaum and at that time, a highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. And when the officers heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal the slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, um, he does. They said he, he loves the Jewish people and even built us a synagogue. And Jesus went to meet with them, but before they arrived at the, 
house, the officer had sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself to come to my house, for I am not worthy of such an honour. I am not even worthy for you to come, for me to come and meet you. Just say the word where you are and my servant will be healed. For I know what it's like to be under authority. I'm under authority of my superior officers and I have authority over the men I command. I say go and they say and they say go and they go. I say come and they come. And if I say to my slaves do this, they do it. And Jesus heard this and was amazed. Turning to the crowd that were following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. This man... This officer in the Roman army had grown up under a, a strict sense of discipline where uh, the rewards were great but the punishment was great too if you didn't follow orders. And he said to Jesus, if I say this, and so then he goes on to say, just speak the word. Just speak the word. He had confidence that Jesus had the authority to bring healing to his slave and that the words of Jesus w would confront the disease in his slave's body and bring healing. That's a way to know God. See, what do you think God does anyway? Does God help people? Is God selective with who he helps? Does your file arrive on his desk in heaven and he puts an, uh, a rejected stamp on it or does he put an approved stamp on it? God has set the universe up in a way that's precise, a way that we know a hundred years from now, what the time and the tides will be. He's put this into, into being. And he has put into being that if we inv invoke the truth of his word, then we'll see the power of God released. Speak the word. I've been to Capernaum and visited this synagogue twice. And it is a profound place because it's a testimony of the power of the words of God. Jesus says to the Roman, I haven't seen faith like this. I haven't even seen it. In all of Israel, wherever I've gone, he can say, well, I've seen religious ritual. I've seen this, I've seen that, I've seen this. But you present to me the sort of faith that I'm looking for, the faith that inspires action in me. One funny thing about this synagogue at Capernaum um, is that next door to it is a church that's built off the ground with a glass bottom. And the bottom remains glass because underneath are the ruins of Peter's mother-in-law's house. And so if you go in the church, it's quite unusual. You're looking through the floor at a pile of ruins, one of which is Peter's mother-in-law's house. Cherished by the Christian community because that was the place where Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. And when you go, you go outside the gates of Capernaum and turn left and you walk for, 
I don't know, 75 metres and you're at the Sea of Galilee and you can see the old stone dock where the ships that crossed the sea would come and where Jesus would have got on and off the boats that would take him to and from the city. A powerful experience. I haven't seen faith like this. The man's faith surprised Jesus and it wasn't the quantity of the man's faith. It was the man's knowledge of the authority of the words of Jesus how, and how authority makes faith work. One revelation that I have learnt is that faith is voice activated. There are a lot of people that you can meet, you don't want to be around them in crisis because they tell you why everything can't happen. Already your own your own self is telling you why things can't happen and you'll get around people who'll tell you the worst. This man understood authority. In the world today, we, we don't like authority. We say, well, no one can tell me what to do. Yet we know that when there's a crisis like a dark cloud, we do it with told because fear will motivate us. But we also see that within us can remain the heart of the rebel that will still, still do the wrong thing. Say the word. See, Jesus is not limited then or now to time, space or different distance. Jesus didn't have to go to the guy's home. He just had to speak into the universe, be healed. Just say the word. Jesus, I know your word has power. I know it has authority. I, your physical location, whether it's here, there, or at my house, is not important. It has to do with the power and the authority that is in your word. When God spoke to the into the nothingness and said, "Let there be light," and light came, it tells us the word the worlds were framed by His words. The power in the Word of God. This man knew what it was like to be subject to a higher power. He knew that sickness that was on his servant was subject to the higher power that was Jesus. When I came to the Lord, um, the whole uh, idea of spiritual authority was very, very foreign to me because I was a lawbreaker, not a law keeper. If um, if I came to a don't walk sign, I would change it to be a walk sign. And after a lot of near-death experiences, I got the insight that don't walk meant don't walk. To, to think that God could speak a word into the universe and heal a man's servant. In Hebrews 11.3 it says, Through faith we understand that the worlds are framed by the word of God and that things that, were, that are seen 
were not made with things which do appear. If I said to Matty Ray, make me a table, uh, he'd say, yeah, where's the timber? But I say, no, you're making it by faith out of nothing. Uh, your um, material is spiritual. He'd say, well, Steve, that's ridiculous. But God made the universe out of things that were not seen. To speak the word and your servant will be healed. The man understood authority. Well, how do you come to an understanding of authority? You start to obey the word of God no matter what you feel about it. In my, uh, in my salvation experience, I made a decision of many decisions, but one of my biggest decisions was to believe the Bible. And uh, irrespective of any inconsistencies or personal opinion or anything like that, I just would repeat the, reveal the Bible. If the Bible said it, I would believe it and I would act on it. And I found that life transforming. Because all of a sudden you have an anchor for your soul. You have a system of belief that you can believe in. In 1 Corinthians 10 it says, For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. In Genesis 1, 1 it says, In the beginning God created heaven and the earth. Our God's a supernatural God. In Colossians 1, 15 it called Jesus the image of the invisible God. The image of the invisible God. See, Jesus became flesh so that we could see what God was like. And Jesus came and he, and he created for us such pressure because he demanded a level of living that many people were not prepared to live. You imagine you're in this highly competitive world. And he said, let the first be last. Well, we didn't, we didn't like that. If, if, you're, if a man asks you to go one mile, go two. This morning, um, I had uh, the happy experience of seeing the 100-year-old man in England I think his name was Tom Watson. This morning by the British government was promoted to colonel. <laughs> and uh, he had simply decided because of a challenge from his daughter that in his own yard he would walk laps with his walker. And his daughter said, we'll donate a thousand pound for every lap to the national health. But it took off and he's raised millions and millions of pounds to help people. And so he was promoted to colonel and they sent a couple of soldiers over from the regiment to present him with his credentials. Well, I thought to myself, in this virus thing, my prayer for me and I, my prayer, prayer for me and my prayer for you, is the heroic which lives within you by the Spirit of God would come out and be seen by the world. 
and the hero that is you, you would realise that God has given you authority to speak the word. And it's his word, it's not your word, but the authority is his. And so when Jesus said, all authority has been given to me, all authority. And where a Roman centurion gets the light come on that says, don't come on, you don't have to come to my place, just speak the word. Last night when I was watching the British report on the coronavirus, I see the 55-year-old British Prime Minister become a father for the sixth time. I see his fiancée, who I would think might be 20 years younger than him, she becomes a mother for the first time. And I say to myself, will you be able to speak the word? Will he be able to speak the word? Will he be able to frame the universe by his word? I don't judge um, human weakness. I'm weak enough myself. But when I see a hundred-year-old man become a colonel in the British Army, he was a captain. Now he's a colonel. He's also a hundred years old. He's raised millions of pounds for natural health workers. These are people, even without the right protective gear, have tried not to let people die alone and frightened. And uh, during whatever I was watching, they were showing pictures of these people like Dr. So-and-so and and Dr. So-and-so and and Nurse So-and-so and and Care Home Worker So-and-so. Who, can, who continued to work on the front line even though, even though all around them people were dying. Where my son who lives in England says to me, isn't it good that the death rate has fallen from 900 a day to 600 a day? I know the world has been shaken to its very core. I know that in the midst of it, I can cry out to God and I can have the sense and the knowledge that he has heard my prayer. I'm not like some dog baying at the moon. I'm a son of God calling to my father and my father hears my words. And I speak to the glorious man, Christ Jesus, and I say, speak the word. Speak the word over society. The invisible supernatural God created the natural world that you and I are a part of today. It was not happenstance. It was not a fluke of nature. It was not evolution. It was the mighty words from his own mouth. He created it all. And because Jesus Christ was the image of the invisible God, Jesus there as a representative, as as an image of what God is like, He raised the dead. He healed all manner of sickness, leprosy, lunacy, demoniacs, withered hands, you name it, and he was able to heal it. 
And he was able to do it because there was nothing that was above his authority. In fact, all was beneath his authority because all that was part of creation so that when he spoke, it had to obey. One man in Matthew 8 was full of 6,000 demonic spirits and all it took was for Jesus to say no. Some people can say I don't believe any of that. They're fables, they're stories. They're made up, they're myths, they're legends. Faith is a gift from God. And the Bible tells us that each of us get a measure of faith. And that measure of faith uh, is enough to get the job done. And to believe it can heal your body, it can comfort your heart, it can help you when you're freaking out. His word has authority. This virus has been a part of this our world, how be it a cursed world. And as such, it's subject to the word of God. That's why it's important to know the scripture and have it memorised in your heart. The Lord is faithful, it says in Thessalonians. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. Don't get yourself fighting this battle in the natural. Soon enough there'll be a vaccine that God will reveal to the inquiring brilliant minds around the world looking for it and the coronavirus will be an unpleasant and awful memory. A wake-up call from God to turn to him. David said in Psalm 119, Thy word I have hid in my heart, that I would not sin against thee. It's not just there so we don't sin. It's there so that when problems come, we know the answer. Psalm 511, New Living Translation. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful uh, praises forever. Spread your protection over them, that all who love your name may be filled with joy. Near where I sit in the chapel at home, just to my left are the communion elements, which I take a couple of times a day. The acknowledgement of the total victory of our God at Calvary over anything that, over anything that uh, attacks us. I've seen my wife uh, hide the word of God in her heart. And the word of God in the heart is that you will not find her running away um, from the hard things. Isaiah 41 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen thee. Yes, I will help you. 
Yea, I will hold thee with my right with the right hand of my righteousness. God's authority. God's authority. We're told in Matthew 18 to bind on earth what we want to see bound in heaven and loose on earth what we want to see loosed in heaven. We're told in James um, 5.16 not to be dismayed, but pray for one another for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We pray for our country to turn to God. We pray for the leadership of our country to turn to God. The story of David and Goliath, little boy, big giant. This is my house. This is Tanya's house. This is Colleen's house. And these people here are my family. These are my friends. These summer neighbours. This is my nation. This plague has been unleashed upon our nation and we come against it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of hosts. When I was a kid, the bus would take me home from school and I'd have two choices. I would have to walk, I don't know, distances seem so short in some ways when you're a kid, and when you're an adult, they're so long. But one of the things was I could take the shortcut through the f- swamp. And the swamp was at the bottom of the road I lived in. If I took the shortcut through the swamp, I had to... Um, it was a very dark place. Um, and uh, to get across some of the low-lying creeks, you could run there'd be some boards on the water or stuff like that and you'd have to run across. And I remember when I was a kid, I used to sing as I went through there old songs that spoke to me, you know, like what's an old one I used to sing. We stand for God and for his glory, the Lord supreme and God of all against his foes. We raise his standard around the cross. We hear his call. I had a better voice when I was younger, but the reality was I find great sense and great peace in singing. Tanya will tell you I am a singer. A lot of the congregation here know I'm a singer. I didn't say I was a good one. I just said I was a singer. And I declare... I declare now, coronavirus, you're a big and bad and ugly giant. But I've taken from the river five smooth stones. You will hear the sound of my sling whirring in the breeze. My God is bigger and his word is stronger. You are part of the curse that is on the world because we have rejected our God. And I repent on behalf of the world and ask God's forgiveness for the sins of the world. You don't have authority over my family, over my body. You don't have authority over my church or my community. I'm stopping you right now. 
The stones are on their way towards you. You will fall and will cut off your head. In Jesus' name, amen.